All right, good morning, students. Thank you very much for coming online. Thank you for joining us, those of you who are here. Um, as we go along, more persons will be joining us. Um, we also have a few persons who are watching via YouTube. Welcome to those persons who are watching via YouTube. We have with us today the recruitment team from the University of the West Indies. Um, we have, <clears throat> yes, we have Mrs. Bolira Houghton and her team, and we definitely want to welcome them. Under normal circumstances, they would have either come to us or we would have, we would have gone to them by now on the campus to get um, all the information and the tour as, as we do annually. But with our current, the current situation that the world is facing. We have to adapt and we have to adjust. Hence, here we are today. Um, in the chat, gentle people, we have two links. I'll repost them. Um, we have first, we have the, an index card that will ask for your information so that you can be added to the University of the West Indies database. So information that they have can be sent directly to you. And we also have the second link is the link to their quick reference guide. That's a booklet that has information about the courses and, and all that, all those, the, the other information we would have gotten um, had we visited the campus. I don't know if you remember that little booklet, but we have the link to it now. So we have it with us at all times. So I invite for them your undivided attention. Please, students, ask questions. Ask all the questions that you need to ask um, at the appropriate time, whether to unmute your mic or type in the chat as we go along. But please ask your questions, get information. If you can send a text message to your classmates, your colleagues, tell them to join us now. Please go ahead and do that if you have a class WhatsApp group or you can get in contact with them um, personally. We also have with us, um, students, we'll be having students from other schools because I did share the link with um, some of the other guidance counselors in the region. So we may have students from other That's schools fabulous. coming on, yes. Yes, so we, we, we welcome you as well, our students from, from all our other schools. Thank you for joining us. And we hope that this session will be beneficial and will be informative. So I now hand over to the UWI team to go ahead and get things up and running. Thank you, Mr. Logan. And you have said it well. Um, we'd either have been there, and trust me, I always look forward to coming to Moran Bay. I just love your location. I just love looking out to the sea. And you normally give me that same classroom and I'd stand on the outside if the students are not there and just look over into the sea. It is so tranquil. Didn't like the road coming though, you know, but I just love being there and I <laughs> always took the opportunity to go. So thank you for having us. And we want to welcome the other schools that are there. I hope you'll be able to share with us the ones who are there. So we have an idea who else has joined you. We invite them also to chat into the chat to ask any questions as there. So today, this morning, there are three of us. I'm not sure who else will be joining um us at this time you know we have exams and so going on so some of the lecturers mm -hmm. are engaged so um tashika taylor miss taylor um you will see her soon because mr Mori has our um ranking uh displayed on the screen uh, Ms. tashika taylor is a student outreach and recruitment officer uh, mr Mori is a student recruitment and odin Mori, um recruitment and outreach officer in the Marketing, Recruitment and Communications Office, and I'm Marjorie Bolero Horton. And today we are very happy to share with you about our UWI. Um, I know many of you know already, you have heard that we are ranked among the top 4% best universities in the world. And first and foremost, we are the number one in the English speaking Caribbean. And we want to keep it there. It is not just by reaching there and saying, oh, we, we reach but we have to be striving. We're looking to see what's happening. We are agile. So we, I'm sure some of you would have heard that when, when the COVID-19 um, pandemic, you know, really entered Jamaica, the UWI was upfront 
with the, in the, with the government and so on. We had a call center. Some of our medical students were calling and, you know, they were there kind of a first, first responders because they were medical students. Um, there we also were involved in helping to some of those respirators or faculty of engineering or students were there to help to restore some of those um, very vital pieces of equipment that were necessary um, for the hospital for persons when they were hospitalized. So again, the UWI, we are also among the top two percent in the Caribbean and Latin America, yes? So because we are part of Caribbean and Latin America and many things that we do. So welcome to the University of the West Indies and we are always happy to share with you. Mr. Moore, you can move. <coughs> The UWI started in 1948 with um, 33 students, but now we are nearly about 50,000 students and we have many graduates and they are all over the world. They are doing excellently. Um, if you hear about UWI graduates, we are everywhere. So our graduates are in industries, in government, you name it, we are there among the leaders, among the movers, what they call the movers and the shakers. We have Nobel laureates and we have um, other persons, our students have gotten shivings, um, scholarships, they have gone all over the place. And the Rhodes Scholars, UW are almost only Rhodes Scholarship because so many of our students have received, have, have been awarded the Rhodes Scholarship and have gone and, and stood us in very good um, standing. Now we are the oldest in the English speaking Caribbean, of course it was was established at the time when after the, you know, the countries in the Caribbean were getting their independence and we wanted to train our own leaders. So the best way to train more leaders was to have established our own university, which was established under the University of London. And so we were established by Royal Charter. We currently have five campuses and we have what we call our UE countries. English speaking Caribbean countries, all English speaking Caribbean countries are a part of our UWI. Sorry, Mr. Logan, can you monitor? I think persons are entering um, and need to be admitted. Now, why the University of the West Indies? We have a rich scholastic well, heritage, as you see here. And um, we, our fees are very affordable. If you want to know if UWI mm -hmm. fees are um, affordable, go and look at some of those. US and uh, Canadian universities offering the same programs uh, because we are ranked, you know, highly along I, with I, them. I, 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 yes, definitely, definitely. Please do that. Mr. Logan, we're hearing you. Okay, so we have a rich Caribbean, rich and vibrant Caribbean heritage. When you are at the UWI, as I said before, all the English speaking Caribbean, but we are not only a Caribbean university, we are all over all over the world, yes? We have our students, some of, even some of our students are studying China. So they, they, they do two years here, our software engineering, doing mobile app, they, they do two years in Jamaica and then they go to China. So we are in China, we are in the US, we are in UK, we are in Canada, and we are also in Africa. So we are a global university, hence our global ranking is well deserved <clears throat> and well placed. Yes, at the university, we are not just about academics, but we are also, we look at the total person. So you have the academic side of that. It's a very vibrant um, place when you get there. And even now, although we are, we are online, we are virtual, our students are still engaged, not only in teaching and learning, but also in the co-curricular activities and development. And my colleague, Mr. Murray, will tell you a little bit about aspects of the um, social and cultural life at the UWI where the students are involved. <clears throat> okay, now at UWI, we, you're, you're going to be doing degrees. So we have um, undergraduate degrees, that's you coming in from high school, and we have masters after you have completed your first degree, you can, and then we have, we go as far as PhDs. So we have all of those. And because we have an open campus, we also have some certificates and some diplomas, so persons can start there. So if you don't have, if you don't meet the matriculation requirement of the UWI, 
you can start there in, in some programs and work your way into you. So the broad umbrellas under which, umbrella under which our programs are taught are called faculties. So the different degrees that you're going to do, they are in kind of what they call like departments, but we have more under them, we have more departments. So, so the bigger department and then you have smaller departments. So we have the science and technology for those who are interested in, in the STEM and the engineering and medicine. And then there is the humanities and education, your creative cultural and creative industries and the arts and so on would fall under these areas. Then there's law, the social sciences and the faculty of sport. We also additionally, you know, we need to, to feed ourselves. Food safety is very crucial, particularly at this time now COVID has shown us some borders sometimes are locked down. How do you feed yourself? So food safety is important. So we have a faculty of science and agriculture, and that is at our St. Augustine campus in Trinidad and Tobago. Now, I know many of you know Mona campus, you have visited there. And, but many of you didn't know that we have another location for the UI Mona, and we have, it's called the UI Mona Western Jamaica campus. So that is in Montego Bay. Lovely location for those of you who have come, maybe not as beautiful as Mona in that sense, but it is very scenic. It overlooks the airport and um, programs, certain programs are taught there. Not everything that is at Mona is there. The aim wasn't to duplicate it in that way. Uh, so there's accounting, digital media, human resource, and all of those that you're looking at there. So we have a mixture of um, science, social science, and the humanities, okay? And there's see medical sciences where we have nursing that you're able to pursue at the UI Mona Western Jamaica campus. So it is one of those locations, if you know, really want to, you see Kingston all the time, you want to go to Montego Bay, see what it is like, need the people there. Even if you don't want to stay there, for the whole three years, you could start off there and then you could come back to Mona or you can start at Mona and go to Mona Western Jamaica campus. But certainly think about that. And it is one campus, but we have two locations. Okay, so I'm gonna ask my colleague, um, Odin Murray. Mr. Murray, before they see that, could they see your face, please? So they know who's talking to them. Mr. Murray, are you there? Are you right here? Most oh. definitely, most definitely. <laughs> so let them see you. Good okay, morning. so there's Mr. Murray. All right, so I will be talking to you guys about the extracurricular or the co-curricular, I say co-curricular because we do it as a part of your overall experience and it's not just after school that you get to engage. So at the UWE, we pride ourselves in our graduates being all rounded. So yes, you're going to leave with a degree that is, um, that makes you qualified, that is accredited, that makes you marketable. However, there are more skills to be learned. There are other things that you can learn to beef up your resume, to ensure that you have the all-rounded package. And so UWE ensures that you, through our Office of Student Services and find, um, Office of Student Services and Development, that you get to engage in programs that will engage or cause you to grow. So we have, for example, our first year experience program, which is catered, as the name suggests, to first years. And it's to guide you along. It's to help you transition into university. It's for you to understand that, okay, you're, no, you're not in high school anymore. You are young adults and you need to prepare yourself for, for work. So um, dining, sessions in how to dress, interview sessions, tips. The ladies might get some tips on makeup. We take you to the, um, to the National Art Gallery. We take you to watch plays. This is before COVID, of course. And we try to expose you to the world and to things um, you probably were exposed to, but in a different light, having a new meaning as a young adult. Um, also within the halls, I know some of you, based on the fact that you are from around the high, would um, live in halls that live on campus. So within the halls, there are programs, there are sporting programs, um, there are programs for outreach. So if that is your, that is what you like to do. There is a 
we also have a program called CERT. This is our emergency response team. So we have our own, if you're into medicine or if you want to, you're practicing or from early, you can join the emergency response team and all of that. So you get hands-on training. Some students even use it as um, things to put on their resume. So the UV prides itself, as I said before, on creating the, the, end, the, overall, the overall student with a package that makes them marketable or outgoing Guild PRO, which is the highest body of student leadership on the campus, is from Morant Bay High. We have a student worker in our office um, who used to attend Morant Bay High as well, and she's also a block rep on Taylor Hall. So we're used to Morant Bay High students coming to the UIMONA and performing well academically and also engaging in other things that will help them to develop holistically. So when you think of the UIMONA, think of course I'm going for a degree but also think how else can I maximize myself so yes my degree is going to be in chemistry but I like to plan events you know can I learn can I do both and I'm here to tell you that at the UE Mona we develop the all round and we try to facilitate all sides of you and ensure that you're ready for the working world thank you Mr. Murray and I'll just pick up from there where Mr. Murray mentioned that when you get to UWI, you actually can get, sometimes some persons get away with three. So some persons get two degrees because we allow you um, to do double majors or sometimes you can do your major and a minor. So it means that you can do in three different areas, sometimes two different disciplines, um, you're able to do your degree in. So when you get out, you are more marketable. And he mentioned also, so you, for example, you like the sciences, you want to do something in science, but you, you probably don't want to necessarily become a teacher. So, um, so you want to do, um, let's say, social sciences or physics, you want to do something in physics. And there are, so you'll see a little later down some of the areas that you can do in physics. So you love physics, absolutely. And you really want to do your physics. So what do you do? You could do your physics. So you could do something in electronics or you could do something, well, some areas you can't mix, but I believe you could do a modern language with it. You could do something in education, a minor in education. You could do something in the cultural and creative industries aspects of that. So you can link your degree. You can do something in the social sciences. So you want to do psychology, but you want to do psychology with Spanish or you want to do psychology with um, with literature, anything, some it allows you some mix. There are some restrictions, however, for some faculty. So maybe like law and um, and law engineering and medical sciences. You can't do a lot of mix because the disciplines take so much. The broad concentration that you have to do in the areas will not allow you to be able to do minors with them. But the university at times allow you what it calls free electives. So the free electives allow you to choose some areas that you want, to, uh, uh, something you want to learn about, but you can't necessarily call it a part of your degree, but you could do that free electives and, and then you're, you're good to go. Some people take up on their free electives afterwards. It might be something that helps you to get a job when a job is not available in a particular area that you study. Okay, Mr. Murray, next slide, please. Okay, this is back to you, Mr. Murray. I'll let you do that since it's your area. You could you could mention, you mentioned the halls of residence already? I didn't, you know, Mrs. I, did, I barely mentioned them. So I can speak okay, a little bit. Just, just give a few on that since it's a part of it, although it's not fully operational, but you could do that. And you could probably just go into the, to the academic requirements. All right, most definitely. So I spoke before that being that you're from Moran Bay High, chances are, you will, you know, live, you will, you will not commute, but try to live in Kingston when you're attending UA. So we have 10 undergraduate halls of residence for students. So this is, a, you have 10 options. Um, one of the halls, um, the Mary Seacole Hall is all female and the Chancellor Hall is all male. So that, you know, that might exclude you. So say you have nine each to choose from. Now you will visit this Office of Student Services and Development website and you can look for accommodation and there's a website there that gives you more information on specific calls. But halls 
as I said before, this is where we administer programs for you to develop outside of classroom. So yes, you call man is a place to, to sleep. You have roommates now. Um, you have flatmates that are from different Caribbean countries. You learn about different cuisines. You learn about um, just the things that you wouldn't know about persons who live in Trinidad, who live in Barbados. And most importantly, you begin to con to contact with people and start a network. So say you finish UE and you see a job opening in Trinidad. You have a friend in Trinidad now that you can go and you can stay and can do that interview and you know possibly get a job. Think, think, make broaden your scope and think, think outside of Jamaica. And living in Hall, you know, affords you the opportunity to network and affords you the opportunity to, to gather and be a part of many programs outside of the classroom. The prices vary based on the year of the hall and based on many things, whether you want a double room or a single room or things like that. So for those specifics, ensure you visit the, um, the Office of Student Services and Development website, and then you will just look for accommodation. No, we're telling you about this wonderful university, about the outside of classroom learning experience and living on hall, in hall and all of that, which is grand. But first you need to get here, right? First you need to um, matriculate, you need to do your CSEC or your CAPE subjects and you need to apply, very important, and then get in. So how exactly, what do we need? So the academic requirements. So for most of our programs in most of our faculties, um, you need a minimum of five subjects, including two or more at the advanced level for full-time. So some of our full-time programs vary in terms of the length of year, most of which is three years for most of our programs. But you have programs in the medical sciences, like say nursing, that's four. You have programs like in the MBBS or um, the doctor of pharmacy program has five years or dentistry. So based on the program you're applying to, you will see you know, what the full-time program um, period is like. But most of them, as I said, is three years. And this is the academic requirement. However, some faculties, so I don't know if we have any fifth formers listening to me or lower six formers and you're yes, thinking- We have fifth formers as well. Great. So you're thinking that after fifth form, you, you know, you'd have gathered enough CXCs, you are mature enough, which is key, and you know you can handle the workload. There are some faculties that will take you into a part-time preliminary program for four years. So the first year you do your preliminary subjects, especially for those who want to go into sciences or do medical, you know, go into medical sciences. You can do a year of preliminary science or those you want to go to the humanities. You can do a first year, you know, part-time or you want to do business and you don't want to go to sixth form. You can come to the social sciences, but we'll admit you, you will enroll as a part-time student until you've gathered enough credits and then you just transfer to being a full-time student, right? So it's afforded to you and for that you need a minimum of five subjects um, and these will be CSEC. English language is the only compulsory subject at the UA. However, pay attention, mathematics is required for programs in engineering, medical sciences, science and technology, sci social sciences and sport. So in this minimum five subjects, we're just gonna go ahead and say, ensure you have your English language and mathematics at the CSEC level. If you want to go on to do your full-time program, have your CAPE. If you're one of those who are going to do medicine, listen up, medicine, and I know we'll speak specifically to that afterwards. But you, instead of two W units of CAPE, you need three at the advanced level. You need three and chemistry and biology are compulsory, right? As I said, we get more information on that. Law, if you're applying for law as well, there's no part-time after grade 11 applying for law. You must have those two W units of CAPE as well. So some programs will take you, as I said, part-time, but there are those where you have to enroll as full-time and having all the matriculation requirements. So as we go into the faculty, separate, um, separate and apart from this, we'll give you those academic requirements and those specific subjects. But well, this is your overall um, academic requirement. You can take a picture of this, take out your phones, snap a picture quickly, and ensure that you know you're aware of what you need so you can apply for the UE.
and they have the cook reference guides. And if you look in the cook yeah. reference guides, it is set up by faculty. So if you look there, we have put the requirements for the different areas. So once you know what you're going to do, it's color coded, you can um, find the requirements there as well. So you have that to take with you as a memento um, from us. Even if you're in fifth form, even if you're in third form, the requirements are not going to change. Um, you might have different programs that are coming up. You know, as I said, you, we, 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 we look to see what is happening, yes? We do forecasting and we, so we, we see what are the requirements? What are the new jobs that are coming up? Do we need to have more jobs in this area? What is it that way? So when we do that, no, we will have additional areas depending on what the governments want, uh, but the requirements will not change. Yes? Okay. All right, Mr. Morris. So now they know, and everybody here, only except if they are in fifth form, everybody in sixth form would already have qualified for the, for the university at a level. Some maybe for full time, depending on if it is like C sec. Let's say if they want to do diagnostic imaging, they would have had their once they have the C sec and the requisite sciences, they can come in full time. And if they have kept unit one, they can come in with nursing as well. So those are some of the areas that you already um, can come in with. Now, since we are on how getting to UWE, and we are going to talk to you about the all the programs and, and um, between us or among us, we are going to be sharing with you some aspects of that. But I think at this point, Ms. Amore, I wanted to just bring up how to apply because we hope some of them would have applied already. Uh, okay, no students, um, if you're in upper six or lower six, this is your time to apply. We have shortened the, the application period. We moved it from March, so by two months, so we're closing in January. This month is when um, the faculties will be looking at some of you to see if you're qualified and some persons will be getting offer maybe by the end of December or into early January. We are going to be making offers before the application closes. So if you, are, if you know the program you want to apply to or by the end of that, we say put in your application for January. You can always make changes. So if you send in an application, and there's a change you want to make, a simple email to admissions will rectify everything. Some of you um, have not yet your, heard about your K unit one results, or maybe even some CSEC for some people doing over. Not to worry, if you have a preliminary grade, put the preliminary grade on the application, and when you get the right grade, you can send it to us, yes? So we are allowing that, we are flexible, we know what is happening with you and, and we are sympathetic. So we work with that so you can work along with us. A simple email to admissions will help to rectify everything. So we are, we are already open for application. We are taking, so whether if you are in lower, lower sixth, you can also apply. Um, fifth form is if you're, not, if you're not returning to school to do CAPE, you could probably start in January for some programs. Uh, you know, you could start in January if you want because we don't know where COVID is going. So we have to make our sort of plans. If you apply, if you're in law six and you apply, you can apply to, to UE. If you change your mind and you want to complete your sixth form, that's not a problem. You can ask for a deferral. We need you to scan and upload your certificates. So your CSEC certificates, your birth certificate, your CAPE certificate, we will need to get those. Um, of course, bearing in mind what I said about, you know, the, those pending, that's all right. So your CSEC and birth certificate should be stamped really by the school. A copy should be stamped and uploaded. However, we are cognizant of what's happening. Some of you are not going into school, you're far away. So you can scan and upload them if you don't get to do it. While you now, when in your early part of application, you can scan and upload it. And then we'll probably ask you later to get it certified. But if you can get it certified now, that's fine with us. So you do that, all right? and send that to us, make sure you scan, you can apply, you can apply first, and then you scan and upload. You don't have to wait on one or the other. Now, those persons who are like, want to do like medical sciences, or if you want to do um, social work, we are going to need other things from you, other documents. So for medicine, if you want to do dentistry or so on, we will need you to get a police record. So you need to apply for your police record. It can come to us 
after the, the after the deadline, because we're not considering the, MB, the medical programs just early, you will have other things to do. You have interviews um, that you have to do. Medical sciences, again, MBBS, dentistry, pharmacy, some of those will require you to write a co uh, an essay as to why you're interested in doing these programs. All right, prepare yourself, students. I want you to do well. So look, look up on the things that, especially in medical sciences, the area that you're interested in. Go online, go on YouTube, read up, talk to people, get attached. Anybody who wants to do physical therapy, you will need to do some volunteer hours at a hospital. Morant Bay Hospital, I think, what's, it, what's the name of it again? I can't remember. Princess Margaret or so? But you will need yeah, to Princess do at least 30 hours at that hospital, and then you can probably do the other 30 at another health facility. But, uh, but you have to do it even though it's COVID. The dentistry said, okay, if you can't do that, what, we, what you can do is that you can write us to say why you can't do it. So you try and you can't get through. So fine, UE is very flexible when it comes to that. And we don't want to overstress you. We want you to put in your application um, to us. Remember, professional e email address so that we can communicate with you. If you have any mis mishap with your professional email address or even your cell num your phone number, communicate with admission so we can make the changes. We will be communicating with you online for everything. So make sure that you have a valid email address that we can reach you at and anything you communicate um, that um, with us. So I think that's for the so ap application is now open. You can go ahead and apply. You will have our contacts at the end of it. So should you have any questions afterwards, you can always write um, us to, to find out. Okay, so we can go back now, Mr. Morito. I think we now go to our, our areas. And since Ms. Taylor has, we have both spoken, we will start with the social sciences at this time. So I'm going to invite Mr. Shika Taylor at this time to share with you about programs in the social sciences. So those of you who are interested in those areas, um, you can, can do what before Mr. Taylor, Mr. Mr. Rodney, Mr. Logan, you didn't tell me how much time I have. Suppose we are going beyond your time. How much time do we have? I was originally thinking an hour and a half, you know. That's what okay, I, so we so we need to uh, so we need to work with that. All right, so we we will so go as. An hour and yes, a half. So 11, 11 yeah. 30. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we will we will lose. Okay, that's what we are working with. So Ms. Taylor will now share with you students about the social sciences. Thank you, Mrs. Horton. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is great to be here with you. It's unfortunate that we could not be there with you physically, but it is still great to be able to share with you. Uh, so the Faculty of Social Sciences, so social sciences, social sciences is the field of study that focuses on the relationship that we have as individuals with society, um, with the development and the operation of societies. And it has to do with how we interact with each other, how we behave with each other, um, how our, our, our culture and our subculture develops and, and, and how we influence the world. So the Faculty of Social Sciences um, will you'll find programs in this faculty that deal with those things. So we have five departments in the Faculty of Social Sciences. You have the Department of Economics, the Department of Government, Mona School of Business and Management, the Department of Sociology, Psychology and Social Work, and the Center for Hotel and Tourism Management. And under these departments, there are some program options that are available for you to pursue, and you'll see some of those on the screen. So you're able to pursue, for example, um, government, international relations, public policy and management, psychology, sociology, social work, anthropology, um, a minor in criminology, you can do banking and finance, accounting, entrepreneurship, management studies, demography, and a host of others, economics, hotel and tourism management, and a host of others. The requirements for the Faculty of Social Sciences, much like the, the general new requirements, you need to have at least five subjects. English language is compulsory, so too is mathematics. You must have mathematics and English language. 
and two W units of CAPE. If you don't meet all the CAPE requirements, then the Faculty of Social Sciences is still open. You can still, you can still um, enter into the Faculty of Social Sciences. However, you may find that instead of spending three years full time, you spend an additional year. Uh, you are able to transition into the faculty of social um, from the faculty of social sciences. You are able to transition into several areas in 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 in, in society. You can become a psychologist, an economist. Um, you can go into banking. You can be a diplomatic officer. You can be a political scientist. You can be a politician. You can be a a, a pollster, an anthropologist, a business manager, an entrepreneur, an editor, um, an auditor rather, a marketing specialist. So there are a host of options and career fields that are available um, for you uh, having had a degree through the Faculty of Social Sciences. And the Faculty of Social Sciences also has the option of weekend programs, meaning that you're able to complete your entire degree on just the weekend. So Saturdays, of course, this mean, this would mean you'd have to give up, give up your Saturdays. But if it is that you decide that um, after high school, you want to, um, you want to earn while you learn. So you have to do you have you have a full time job that you have to do, or you've gotten a full time job opportunity and you still want to pursue your education you have the option of taking on the weekend program in the faculty of social and sciences um, you're not all the programs are offered um, as weekend programs though uh, you can do banking and finance as of january you can do banking and finance entrepreneurship human resource management and marketing so those are those are those are the options that are currently available as part of the weekend program and of course, you can see on screen there of our own prime minister. He is a graduate of the, not just the, the UEMONA, but of the Faculty of Social Sciences, UEMONA. All right, so thank you very much for listening, ladies and gentlemen. Any questions, you can place them in the chat. Thank you very much, Ms. Taylor. And so students, remember, place the questions in the chat. I am going to bring up for you now um, the Faculty of Medical Sciences. And um, somebody's um, somebody's we are short sure mic is open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you close your mics? Sure. Carita Anderson, your microphone is open. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see for the. All right, Mr. Murray, do can you do the law for me? Let me I see if I can find the one for humanities to share, and then the other. So, can you speak to them about the law for me in the meantime? Okay, we'll do. Have you located it? Okay, go ahead with this sport. <laughs> you seen the faculty? You seen the faculty of sport? Yes, we do. Okay, you seeing still seeing it? Yes, but you could go ahead with the sport. You know. Okay. All right. Go so ahead, Mark, yeah. okay, we have our newest faculty here at the UE, at the UE, and this is our faculty of sport. And it is so interesting that this faculty, you can, it's, it's found, how it's grouped, is that you can experience the faculty through different campuses. In fact, at Mona, we have what we call the Academy of Sport, the Mona Academy of Sport, which is a, a part of the faculty. And in that academy, there are scholarships and there are also teaching programs. And we have two undergraduate teaching programs in the academy. And these are the Bachelors of Science in Sports Coaching and the Bachelors of Science in Sports Kinetics. So sports coaching is pretty self-explanatory. You want to be a coach, you know? We'll engage you in the main sporting disciplines that you would have 
I'm known from high school. So that be the cricket, the football, um, athletics, netball, basketball, and also expose you to others. At the end of the program, you'll be exposed to at least 10 sporting disciplines and be able to coach in them. So of course, it's a degree. So you can teach, you can enter spaces um, where you're a coach, you can enter sports management having this degree. So it's it's marketable and in, in a space that Jamaica, that track and field is a huge thing and we're growing in other sporting disciplines, this is a good degree to have. Now also some of you might be interested in understanding the body as it relates to sport, but you don't want to do physiotherapy, you're not a science student. So I'm here to tell you that uh, we have our faculty, we also have a sports, a Bachelor of Science in Sports Kinetics. So this is understanding the body, maximizing the body, the muscles, the anatomy, and how it relates to sport, right? So if you have that interest, this is the faculty for you. Um, we need a minimum of five subjects to be um, eligible for the faculty. English, language, and mathematics are compulsory at the CSEC level. And if you're coming in for the full-time three-year program, you're gonna need a two double units of CAPE in any subject area and also if you want to come in after fifth form you can with just your five um your five c -sec subjects english and language and mathematics being compulsory so that's the faculty of sport and as i said before there are also scholarships available um in various various disciplines we're going to ask the person not to mark on the representation i'm moving on now to the faculty of law um let me do the fhe first Okay, okay. Let, let, I'll allow Mrs. Horn to do the other faculty. Okay, now students, are you seeing the screen? Are you seeing it, Mr. Maureen? Yes, I am. Yes, okay, so Dr. Plummer wasn't able to be at this one. As I said, she has another engagement, but she has sent her, she has done a presentation for you for the Faculty of Humanities and Education. Very interesting. In marketing and outreach for the Faculty of Humanities and Education. Today, I'm here to speak to you about programs and careers in the humanities and education. Our faculty has a long history and tradition of research. We include the Caribbean School of Media and Communication, History and Archaeology, Institute of Caribbean Studies, Language, Linguistics and Philosophy, Library and Information Studies, Literatures in English, modern languages and literatures and the School of Education. We offer a diverse range of programs. These programs include in the Caribbean School of Media and Communication, the Bachelor of Fine Arts in Animation and Film Production. Um, Jamoy, um, we are going to kick you out of the session if you're going to insist on writing. So could you, you kindly desist from drawing, Jamoy? Bachelor of Arts, Digital Media Production, Integrated Marketing, Communication, and Journalism. Now, the Department of History and Archaeology, we offer history, history and archaeology, and history and journalism. And the Institute of Caribbean Studies offers the Bachelor of Arts, Cultural and Creative Industries, Entertainment and Cultural Enterprise Management, Music and Performance Studies. Department of Language, Linguistics and Philosophy offers language, language communication and society, linguistics, philosophy, linguistics and language education, languages and linguistics, Caribbean sign language interpreting. The Department of Library and Information Studies offers information studies and librarianship. The Department of Literatures in English, they offer the BA or the Bachelor of Arts in Film Studies, Liberal Studies, Literatures in English, Writing, Literature and Publishing, which is a brand new program. The Department of Modern Languages and Literatures offers French, Spanish, BA in French and Spanish, and minors in Japanese, Mandarin and Korean. The School of Education offers a Bachelor of Education programs with specialty areas, history education, literacy studies, science, mathematics, geography, social studies, language education, information, technology, and computer science. And you have cross-faculty options such as geography, computer science, and mathematics. Now you have a wide 
array of employment opportunities upon graduation. You can work in animation studios, educational institutions, fashion houses. You can work in government industries, hotels, um, organizations like UNESCO, CARICOM, field companies. You can work in travel. You can be a publisher, um, public relations event, you name it. There are a, even banks, so there are a wide array of areas. Now with a degree from um, our faculty, you have a wide array of uh, professions that you can pursue. These include uh, advertise, advertising copywriter, animator, you can be an author, a broadcast journalist, you can be a travel blogger, you can work as a movie director. You can, uh, you literally, the sky is the limit. So there are so many jobs from journalism, film director, events manager, public relations officer. Um, you can, a crisis manager, education consultant, principal, professor, insurance adjuster, banker, translator, event planner entertainment consultant, art director, creator, um, create, uh, creative director, educational psychologist, policy advisor, designer, and of course you can be a jack of all trees and master of them all. No, you can also work online through Fiverr and Upwork.com and these are just some of the areas in which you can work online. The fact is that with a degree from our faculty, there's almost nothing you can do. We are affordable, student-centered, multidisciplinary, cutting edge, and always evolving. Now, if you want to know more about our faculty, check out our Humanities Virtual Roadshow, Pandemic Proof Career in Humanities, and this is on YouTube. We're also pretty flexible. We'll take students from science and, and business backgrounds. Now, get in touch with us, take a picture, take a screenshot, right? We're on Instagram, Facebook, check out our YouTube page. You can send us an email, my email address is right here. I look forward to hearing from you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Plummer. So that's the humanities and education. And for those of you who are interested, there are so many careers in there that's called the multidisciplinary faculty and of course you can do a degree from the humanities along with something from science and technology or something else from um, the social sciences uh, those it's pretty flexible um, in the faculty of humanities and education and you can do multiple degrees um, from that area okay so mr Murray, you could share for me now on law Mr. Murray. Oh. All right, everyone. So I know there's some budding lawyers at Morant Bay High and even the schools that you know were invited, everyone listening. So I'm here to tell you of our law program. It's a very good law program. We have a faculty of law at the UEMONA and it has one undergraduate program, and that's a bachelor's of law degree. Now it's a three-year program, and to get into this um, faculty. You need a minimum of five subjects. English language is the only compulsory subject at the CSEC level, and it's a must. You must have two, at least two W units of CAPE um, to enter. It's a full-time program, and we, we require that you have competitive grades. So I know that I said minimum of five, and I know I said two W units, but if you're doing three, that works in your favor. And of course, if you're doing more than five, it works in your favor. Law is just very competitive and hard to get in. And so the best grades um, will get you into law. Now, when you're finished with the degree, you're not yet a lawyer. You just have a degree in law. You must attend law school and be called to the bar. I think many of our students were called yesterday and the day before you had some new attorneys were called to the bar yesterday. So what happens is that after you finish law school, you have after you finish the law faculty, you have to go to law school. I know there's one law school in Jamaica and that's a Norman Manley Law School. As the relationship with Norman Manley where if you are a UE graduate from law, they must give you a spot. You have an automatic spot 
at the normal man in law school. If you do law anywhere else, you'll have to sit an entrance exam. And depending on space, that's how they admit persons. So even if you pass, you might not even get in, right? So to be on the safe side, one of the advantages of doing the law program at UA is that you have an automatic spot and entrance to the normal man in law school, at which you'll spend two years this is where you'll put all the things you've been learning at the faculty, you'll put them to practice, you'll be going to court and all of that. Mock trials, doing internships at law firms, all of that happens at Normandy Law School. And you're exposed to the various um, areas of law, be it commercial, um, entertainment, family, criminal law, all of that, if you're just into drafting, you don't want to go into the courtroom, you'll be exposed to all of that. Now the fee for our faculty, the Faculty of Law is 10,000 US dollars for the academic year. It's one of our more expensive programs. So that's it for the Faculty of Law. And if you're interested, I'm, I'm sure you'd have seen the academic requirements as well to get in. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mori. All right, so we are going to look now at the Faculty of Engineering. I don't know how many of you know that we have a Faculty of Engineering at UWE Mona. Um, we have been teaching engineering at UWE for many, many years. Yes, we are 70, 70 odd years old at the university, and we have been teaching engineering for pretty much more than half of those years. I'll be not at the UWE Mona, but we were at our St. Augustine campus doing some areas of engineering. And when you look in the flip book, you will see all the areas that are at St. Augustine. They are not necessarily at Mona, only one. So are you seeing my screen? Are you seeing my screen? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, so these are the areas that we have at UWE Mona, the biomedical engineering. So those of you who want to work in the medical field, um, but not necessarily to become a doctor. Biomedical engineering could be an area that you, you, you could look at, especially in, in, in these days. And there's a civil engineering, electronics engineering, and the elect electrical and power engineering. Those are the four areas that we, we teach engineering in at the UIMONA. We, however, have another engineering program, the software engineering program. We have two but they don't fall under the Faculty of Engineering, they are under the Faculty of Science and Technology. One I mentioned earlier about the mobile app where you go to the, um, you do two years with us and then you go to China for two years. That's those fall under the Faculty of uh, Science and Technology. So these are the areas that we offer in engineering. Now, some of you might be interested in engineering, but you don't necessarily have those requisite CAPE subjects to get into um, to engineering because you must have physics, you must have um, pure, uh, or pure and applied mathematics to get into engineering, two double units for the engineering. But if you don't have that and you want to enter um, a year early, you could do the preliminary engineering and we will take you with the CSEC and prepare you to go in straight into engineering. So that would be four years um because you do one for the preliminary and then the other three years to get your degree your bsc degree in engineering one of the good things about engineering is that the engineering has um a lot of um scholarship have scholarships and bursaries that are available now our electronics engineering is a bit accredited all our programs are accredited once we have graduated persons they are accredited so we have local and so accreditation, but the electronics engineering is a bit accredited similarly to what is done in the United States, okay? So you have that additional accreditation. Here are some ways that you can fund your, your engineering degree uh, because it is, it is 10,000 US, the equivalent of 10,000 US dollars for your tuition fee. If you're doing the preliminary engineering, however, we give you a 30% discount. So in, in that pre-engineering, you don't have to pay the 10,000, it's minus 30% of that. The other, um, when you go into the other programs in engineering, 
uh, there are these are the scholarships and bursaries that are available and Miss, Miss Taylor will tell you some other areas a little later. So look at it students, you, you don't have to say, boy, I can't do it, I don't have any money. We hope that you have someone, we hope that you and your parents have been um, looking at how you can prepare, but you cannot get additional help with the scholarships and bursaries that are available. So if you want to become an engineer, there's a one of the first um, engineers I met at Mona is a graduate, um, what's his name again? Can't remember, from actually Morant Bay High and he used to come with me, excellent young man. And when, after he finished his degree in electronics, he had so many job, job offers, but he didn't want to take them up because he wanted to complete his master's. And while he was doing the master's, he was working. Um, lots of money when he told me what, you know. So those are areas that you can do students engineering in these days, especially science and engineering, the STEM, STEM areas, you can never be out of a job um in those areas so that's one area that um you can look at if you are strong in the sciences love mathematics love physics and just want it to be a part of your life okay so that's for the engineering okay let us look at those persons who are interested in medical sciences all right uh so Medical sciences. You're seeing the screen, right? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, miss. Yes, yes. So the Faculty of Medical Sciences, there are about eight programs there. These are the persons that we train in the Faculty of Medical Sciences. Seven physicians, nurses, physical therapists, basic medical scientists, radiographers, dentists, clinical pharmacists. And the eighth area is at our St. Augustine campus. So if you want to become a veterinarian, uh, you would go to the St. Augustine campus of the university to be able to be trained as a veterinarian. So those are the basic er areas that we, the eight areas that we train persons in. I'm just giving hello. a glimpse. Hello? Um, do you offer neuro neurological um, studies? Uh, well, that I am sure is going to be at, no, we don't have any program in, in that at our undergraduate level. And I, and I doubt that many areas start over that. You would probably have to start with a different degree, with a, a, a degree, um, maybe in the medical sciences, and then you move on depending on where on you want to work. So, but we don't have any in neurological sciences but you could do your physician, you could become a physician, or you could do go into your science and technology and, um, and move on from there. You want to work in the medical field? Yes. You want to work with people? Mm -hmm. I should, well, it, it would be best for you because we have neurologists and we have, and, but those persons have done their MBBA degree and then go on, on to a further training and further training yes so you're looking about maybe like a 13 12 to 13 or so years so you have you know as you go on all right so these are some of the areas that we have these are some of our complexes that our children um, students are taught in now the programs in medical sciences differ some for three years some for four years some for five years so if you want to become a radiographer, a diagnostic imager, then a physical therapist, or you want to do basic medical science, you don't necessarily want to become a doctor, then you have three years um, for that. Yes, if you want to become a nurse or the clinical pharmacist, the pharmacist, then it is four years and to become the physician and the dentist, it's gonna take you five years. So five years and then you have your internship. I think all of them, you have to have some aspect of internship, you also have to do some regional exam, especially for the nurse. And all of them have some aspect of internship that you have to do. So you factor that into it. But then you do working after you have completed the degree. And um, so you can help to earn some money. When you become the medical doctor, you actually get two degrees. We have a basic medical sciences degree that some persons find that they read three years and they, they say, this is not for me. So they drop out, but 
before they go, we if they complete the three full years, they can get a basic medical sciences degree. And if they complete it at the end, then they get a double degree, the basic medical sciences and the MBBS. Now, if you want to go into the field of medicine, you can't be just any and anybody, all right? We are looking for particular people to enter the field of medicine. I was driving home from work yesterday and I heard some persons talking about their experiences at the hospitals. And I'm sure maybe some of these persons are persons who we have trained. In the, when I just started at university, we used to take just the persons who were bright. We didn't look at any other anything else. Once they're bright and they have all the Cape Unit ones and or so we take them in. No, when you're applying to medical sciences, we are looking for other things. We are looking to see who you are. We want persons who are professional, ethical, competent, empathetic. And I mentioned the, and they called a particular hospital name. I won't call the name of the hospital now. And they spoke about the experiences that they had. One man said, how the doctor spoke with him. He had to say, wait, hold on a minute. I am a patient the way, as if he was nobody. And they spoke about the nurses and how, how one person was was stabbed and, and they sent him to go and register even with the blood streaming down their faces and so on. It's other persons who had to take it up. We want persons who are caring. Yes, they have to look at the patient care. So if you are not interested in people per se and you just want to, be, you want to become a dentist or you want to become a doctor or you want to become a clinical pharmacist because it sounds sexy or because it sounds like prestigious, that is not the person that we want. We want persons who really are going are good manners well mannered respectful caring because we are going to be dealing with people so if you love people hard working and you want to help people self motivated then this is a um, area for you and it is teamwork so one person can't do it yes the nurse alone can't do it the doctor alone can't think okay i am good to go no everybody will have to do it. so what do you need to be doing now and they have given you some directions. You need to be well balanced, not only go to classes, but we hope you are involved. We know that COVID has kind of dictated some of the things that we now do. But certainly you would have been doing before. And so we can use that if you are in upper sixth. Yes, so you should be gaining some experience. You observed the area. Remember I mentioned before, go on YouTube, see some of that, even if you can't go in. Just look at some of the things that are happening, all sort of experiences you can get from the um, YouTube. And you should be developing self-confidence because when you're going to be dealing with person's health and so they want to know that confidently that you know what you're doing and so they will trust you um, because confidence will inspire trust. These pro programs in the Faculty of Medical Sciences like MBBS, the clinical pharmacist, the dentist, uh, um, they are a little pricier than, than others. So you must have a plan and the plan should be with your parents. Yes, and you need to be, begin. Now, if you're an upper six, it can a little bit late, but Miss Taylor will tell you some of the areas that you can, how you can help um, in a way, all right? So you look exploring scholarships and bursaries um, and you will hear about that and jump that, yes? So now you are going to be focusing on how, as you prepare for your CAPE and your CSEC, then you do that. But talk to your parents and also go to the YouTube and listen. And I will leave it to my competent colleague to tell you a little bit more. So I said, now be prepared. When you join us, these are some of the things. If, if you are not willing to do that, then the Faculty of Medical Science is not for you. Yes, hard work, fewer holidays, longer school days, yes? living on your own, all right, all of those. So when you get in, what are we going to teach you? We are going to teach you competence in the area that you're interested in. Yes, so the competency development in treatment patient care, and you're going to get the theory as well as the practical. So when you hear people talk about, oh, you were not practical, that is ridiculous because you can't train persons in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, Science and Technology and all the other areas without you having um, practical, um, practical experiences, all right? We do a lot of simulation. So even now our students, are, some of them are not in, but we have the 
um, simulation that they use so they can get their practice. So students can go in and, and get practice competencies in different areas. So you don't have to necessarily be working at first on live bodies, but you use simulation. And see so that last thing at the bottom here, I am pointing on um, where it says simulation in medicine that the UWI Faculty of Science and Technology and Faculty of Medical Sciences developed uh, a cardiac simulator that they used to teach open heart surgery. And the good thing is that we have exported it and some of the top medical schools have bought into our, into our, bought our simulator. All right, so graduation, you heard that you have to do some in, um, internship you have to do exams and um, in order for you to go as you go out into the world of work, all right? So here is an advice. Choose for the love and not for the money. And Confucius says, he that loves does, does what he loves, never have to work a day in his life. So that's the faculty of medical sciences. There's also the faculty of science and technology. I am just going to see if I find the slide and just give you a brief walk through what I need for Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor, I'm going to ask you to do the, um, to talk about the scholarships and bursaries. We only have eight minutes, so between you and I, so do the scholarship for me and then I will briefly go through the faculty of um, science and technology afterwards. Sure, no problem, Mrs. Horn. So the finance in your university education, you have a myriad of options in order to finance your university education, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I will tell you just a few, but there are a lot of others. Um, what you find, what you'll find most important, is to ensure that you do your research when you're thinking about financing um, options. All right, research is critical when doing your research. Ensure that you make note. Well, first you'll need to find out how much money you need. Um, so you need to find out how much you need when do you need it by and then you look for the different options and in looking for the different options ensure that you make note of the deadlines um, as well as when they open and whether it is that you need to um, submit a paper-based application or whether you need to um, submit an online application these are critical things all right and ensure 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 that you make note of the deadlines make note of the deadlines um, ensure that you organize your whatever number of, of, of scholarship or bursary opportunities or opportunities it is generally ensure that you you organize those and keep them in separate files and what is important and i want you to listen and ladies and gentlemen what is important is that you continue to maintain your academic reputation yes so ensure that you continue to go to your classes, ensure that you're getting your good grades. I know you're in, I don't know if you have fifth formers here, but you know, you know you're in sixth form and you finish your exams and you feel like you're bigger, you're better, you're bold now, you don't have no time for class, and you don't have no time for school, and you're just a go, but I already apply to you, I already get through, and I just a come at school because some of you come at school. No, no, no. You still need to ensure that you go to your classes, you participate in your classes, you still get your good grades, you participate in your co-curriculars, you participate in the extracurriculars, and you stay engaged in school, all right? Because this is critical when it comes to a lot of the financing options, a lot of the options that are available to you for uh, financing your university education. Now, let's look, look a little bit at some of the scholarship opportunities that are available to you. You have a myriad of scholarships and bursaries um, that are available to you. Uh, you have scholarships that are based on academics, sports, you have needs-based needs scholarships, and you have scholarships that are based on particular skills, um, as well as student prizes. So uh, one particular scholarship, and this is one that is always very interesting for me, is the UWE Open Scholarship. The UWE Open Scholarship is a full scholarship, ladies and gentlemen, a full scholarship. It grants you your tuition. It pays for your accommodation, whether your accommodation is going to be on campus or off campus. It covers your books. It covers your food. If it is that you're going to need 
lab coats and so on, you, you will have money for that. It gives you some spending money as well. All right. So it covers every single thing that is associated with every single every single expense that is associated with your university education so for the open scholarship the requirements for the open scholarship you need to have at minimum at the bare minimum you need to have at least five csec subjects and at least three w units of cape for the cape you must have caribbean studies you must have communication studies all right and that's at the very minimum in addition to the the academics you also need to show that you have leadership potential and yes um leadership potential these are the requirements for the open scholarships, but they're for scholarships generally. You need to show leadership potential. You need to be involved and active. So whether it is that you are involved at your school, maybe it is that you are part of the debating team, maybe you're the class monitor, you're a club president, you're a student council rep, um, you, you're your sports captain for sports day, or you're captain the football team or the netball team, whatever it is whatever involvement um, that you have at school that is that is really important however we do it it's not limited your involvement and your leadership potential is not limited to just your school if you're involved in your community if you're active in your community if you serve in your community then that is also important so too if you are active and involved in whatever religious group that you're a part of yes so those are those are things that are are critical and important in accessing scholarships generally but especially the ue open scholarship we also have general ue scholarships and bursaries we have over a hundred scholarship opportunities that are available to you ladies and gentlemen over 100 so we have scholarships um i mean like i said there are scholarships that are that are given based on on academics, based on um, how well you're doing in sports, um, needs based scholarships. Usually, those are termed as bursaries and scholarships based on on specific things. So donors donors may 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 grant scholarship to persons based on the school that they're from, the parish that they're from, the the, the number of CSEC or, or capes that they got, the grades, um, what program they want to get into, what year they're in. So there are a lot of opportunities for you to access scholarships and bursaries. But if you don't apply, then you don't stand a chance. Yes. Um, the Ministry of Education is also another another great resource. So the Ministry of Education website, they you will find a lot of scholarship opportunities that are on that that will be on that website. I'll highlight two if it is that you want to, if it is that you want to gain an, a, a bachelor's a bachelor of education degree. So you want to to be able to teach mathematics and science. Um, there is a scholarship for uh, mathematics and science education through the Ministry of Education. If it is that you're interested in the engineering program that we offer as well, the Ministry of Education will grant uh, a scholarship for engineering students as well. So those are some options in relation to scholarships. Some other options outside of scholarships and bursaries, you have um, the UA payment plan. The UA payment plan, you can uh, take that on. You pay 15% of your tuition, just 15% of your tuition, and you make arrangements with the UA administration to pay the rest across the semester and over the, the academic year. So that's one option. Half we also have, you, sorry? Half a, minute, half a minute left for you. <laughs> I need one. Right. So you also have um, other options such as work and travel, what we, what we call work and travel, is that's a cultural exchange program. You're not able to, well, it's, it's not a UE, a UE only program. It's a program that is open to ter full-time tertiary level students of, the, of, um, of, of any tertiary level institution. So it's not a, a UE specific program. And it's a private program, so it's not done through the, the, the through the university. Um, but what it does, it gives you access to to work opportunities abroad, usually the US in the summer months, and you get to not only experience the culture there and learn how they work there in the US and uh, um, and get to meet people and so on and get the work experience but you also get to earn in us dollars and you can in turn use that to finance your university education there are also on-campus student opportunities 
once you are a full-time UA student, you're able to work up to 15 hours part-time each week um, on campus. We have a number of departments, a number of faculties, a number of offices across the campus that will, that will take you on. And again, you're gaining work experience. You're gaining work experience and you are getting, you're getting some money to, that you can use to finance the expenses associated with getting a university degree. There are also loans that are available. Um, through various financial institutions across the island, uh, commercial banks, credit unions, uh, microfinance uh, institutions, credit unions especially, I implore you to check those out or have your parents or guardians check those out. Those have those tend to have a much lower interest rate than your, 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 your general um, commercial banks and so on. There's also, we also have JAMVAT and NYS. Both programs are government focused program, government programs, and both programs will ask that you do some voluntary service. With JAMVAT, you do 250 hours voluntary service, and JAMVAT gives you 30% of your tuition up to $300,000. Um, National Youth Service will pay up to 20% of your tuition. And all they ask, they, they do that in exchange for some, 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 some voluntary hours. So you're giving back to your community, you're gaining valuable work experience, and you are getting back some money that you can use to finance your university education. We also have the, if you're on the PATH program, if you're a part of the PATH program, then there are tertiary grants that are available through the ministry for that. And finally, we have the Student Loan Bureau. So the Student Loan Bureau, which a lot of people tend to shy away from, has one of the lowest interest rates anywhere. All right, lowest interest rates anywhere. And it also grants you a moratorium, meaning that you don't start paying for your loan until six months after you complete your, your, your university degree, right? So you start to, you finish your university degree, you get your degree in July, you don't start paying back until the next January. So you get some time to get settled in, um, get a job, start your career, start to, to earn and save some money, and then you start paying back six months after, and you get up to 15 years to pay back for your student loan. All right, so again, ladies and gentlemen, those are just a few of the options. There are other options, um, holiday jobs, remote work, especially know that we're in a, in a pandemic and moving forward when we get back to, to, to the so-called normal uh, a lot of the normal will look like remote work so you can you can work online you can be a tutor for your peers there are other entrepreneurship um, opportunities that are available and a lot of opportunities that are available in general but what is critical is that you do your research research the options and plan ahead all right thank you very much for your time Thank you, Ms. Taylor. And you see Morant Bay and other schools, why we had to, we, we, well, she had a little time to spend. So I'm going to ask Mr. Logan for a few minutes to do, just show you um, a couple of slides from the Faculty of Science and Technology. But it was important that we, we point out to you ways that you can help to fund your education. So you are you have no excuse whatsoever. There is something for you. You should have been doing something, but look around, ask around, as you say, research, research, research. So you can't say you, we didn't help you with um, identifying ways to study. And we hope that those ways to study are going to benefit us from the UWI as you come to access one of our, our very, um, and we, we, we call our, our credible degrees that are going to get you out into the world of work and to get you um, uh, going. Now, the, the last of our faculty that we have shared is the Faculty of Science and Technology. And um, it, to get here, of course, you should, of course, have had your science subjects. We do hope these are the STEM areas and these are very important, like everything else, for, for the development, for development, economic growth and development. As we look around, we see so much construction going on. And, um, you know, we, um, we hear of, as, as COVID has locked us down, we have to find innovative ways of building our own economy. And you must have something to build with. And this is one of our areas. So they say it's important for development. The use of technology will continue to grow and the labor force worldwide will always be growing. Yes, so it helps strong economies as we create more jobs in the STEM, in the STEM areas. To get into the Faculty of Science and Technology, mathematics, chemistry, biology, physics, geography, geology, geography, 
Um, so those are some of the areas. So here are some CSEC subjects that you can have, your computer science, your computer technology, all of those will get you into the science and technology. Now, whether you come in for four years or you come in for three years will de depend on how many, uh, if you have both CAPE units. If you have double units of CAPE in the areas that you want to do, then you can do three years. However, if you have CSEC and one CSEC, your CSEC and one unit of CAPE, then you come in for four years. And you can use that as we had mentioned earlier, stepping stone either to your continue your science degrees or you can go into the Faculty of Medical Sciences once you have done a year. So you can come in at the preliminary level, which is four years, or you can come in at the normal level, um, which is um, three years. So there are several um, areas in, so they have the science in chemistry, biochemistry, and these are some of the degrees that are there. I hope you are seeing the screen. Uh, I won't go through all of them. I'll just give you a couple seconds to look at them. So those are areas that you can go into. Somebody asked, asked about neurology or neurological sciences, and this one would fall here. We have something you can be a neuroscientist. Um, that's another area in the neurosciences that you can do if you're doing your biochemistry, okay? Then you have the chemistry plane. Chemistry, which are different areas. You can do that with management, with education, and of course, the industrial chemistry and the food chemistry. And we talk about food, food, um, food safety, food production, food preparation, all of that. And you know, Jamaican brand is, is, is big everywhere. So that's where you could, you could enjoy a fruitful career. Then the computer sciences, here are the areas, computer science, software engineering, information technology, computer systems engineer. Um, those are some areas um, for you. I'm going down quickly so you can see them as they come up on the screen. You are going to have your, your recording so you'll be able to go back and view them and ask us um, questions if, you know, if needs be, okay? Then there's the life sciences, and that one has to do with plants and animals like ourselves. Those are the areas that you can work in um, if you're in the life sciences and you like the biology, yes, along with some other sciences. Then there's the physics or oh, mathematics. Here we have the mathematics. Those who want to be actuarial sciences and scientists, and I know a few from Morant Bay High School. I'm not sure which other schools are there, so I can't call your names if I know, but I'm sure that we'd have had some coming out of your out of your area. So it's a mathematics includes studies of topic quantity, structure, space, change. And remember we said you need mathematics for your, your engineering as well. So you see that's a core foundation there. And then there's a physics. Okay. And it says it explores the structure of matter and how the fundamental constituents of the universe interact from very small using quantum mechanics to the entire universe using general relativity. Okay, so those are some of the areas there. And I think we also have at our Cane Hill campus, those who want to do meteorology, that also is there and that would be one that fall under physics with physics and mathematics if you want to do. So those are some areas um that are in the sciences um that you'd be able to do so that was just a, a quick one through the sciences and you can look back at your look back at your um your recording and just see the areas that are there if you do have any questions we are going to give you i'm going to ask mr Murray to put up the our email addresses you can your email address you can write us to the um email recruiting email or we have our WhatsApp number, you can send us a message and we will respond to that. And of course, Mr. Logan will, um, will be able to give you my number or so, if anything. So thank you again for allowing us to share with you. We are very excited about you coming to the University of the West Indies. And we are looking forward to you. We don't know what kind of um, environment you're going to come in, whether you're going to come in um, very 
virtually or you're going to come in physically, but I know the students are having a good time because I have a group of first year students and when I ask them, since we are having a good time, you know, we just would love to be able to connect with some persons and come on the campus and see, but for now, we are, we are enjoying ourselves and the first years have done their first um, exams are, are doing. Uh, and it is interesting. So we look forward to seeing you. One of the things, again, I forgot to mention is that while you're at UWE, you have the opportunity to be able to study at one of our other campuses. So you can go for a year or for a semester to St. Augustine or Cave Hill, and you come back and finish here. Or you can go to one of our external partners in Canada, UK, US. And it doesn't extend the life of your degree because we use the credits from where you have gone while you get that cultural experience you also get an academic experience from another institution and that if you go is going to be on your transcript as well if you're going to the uwi internal ones then you also can get some assistance um, in going yes so thank you very much and we don't see any questions in the chat mr logan are there any questions from the youtube that we would like to answer and can I get some of the schools that are there so that we could thank them for coming. And if they do have questions, they can also reach out to us. You could give the numbers here, our numbers, and they could reach out to us and we could still share with their students, okay? All right, I am not seeing any questions from YouTube, but I am absolutely sure that the students here on the Zoom, they must have questions or concerns or queries or something they want to clarify. So now the floor is open, students, for you to get that clarification. The same clarification that you will ask me for tomorrow or next week or next month, this is the chance to get it right from the source. So go ahead and unmute and, and, and ask your questions. Nice having you, Iona. I see Ayona is here. So we are happy to share with you too. And we hope it was quite informative. But if you do have any questions, please feel free. We are opening, we're here for you just now. As long as Mr. Logan allows us, we are here. So open up, don't be shy. And when we're gonna say, oh, I had that question, why didn't I ask it? Open up, no question is silly. If the counselors here and they want to ask a question, you can ask. If we don't have the question at the moment, we will get it and get it back to you. No question. Hello. It was so clear, Mr. Okay. All right. Who am um, I speaking with? I just see a guy. Maya. What's her name? Maya Philly. Hi, Maya. Hi. What's your um, question? For persons who wish to go in the medical field to do specialization, the residency, can you go over a piece to do the residency? Well, for that first year, you have to do, when, when you're finished for that, you have that one year internship that you do here. I'm not sure at that graduate level um, what is required, but if you are, I'm sure you'd have to do it if you're doing for you, you'd have to do it on a, one of the UWI jurisdiction, which is like one of our, our islands, yes? because outside of that, you wouldn't have a lot of control. So if in that case, you'd probably have to do it with an institution that is overseas. So if you're going to be doing a UWE degree, whether at UWE Mona or one of the UWE, you would have to be in the Arab, um, in, 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 in Jamaica or one of the islands to be able to do, if it is you're doing at our university at a master's level or, or at a PhD level. But many of our students, once they have finished it, you know, they go overseas. You can go overseas and, and work and do your um, thing there. But for, for the internship, you have to do it in one of the U.S. jurisdiction. Bahamas, Jamaica, uh, um, Trinidad and Tobago or so. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Okay, we seem like we 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 gave all the information required, Mr. Logan. Uh, 
I'm looking. I think I saw somebody unmute their mic with Kashika Jared. You unmuted your mic earlier. I'm not sure if you wanted to ask the question or say something. Well, they have the WhatsApp, so they can send us a um, they can send us a, a message. So, Mr. Logan, again, we are really very happy to have shared. And we look forward to receiving your application. Students do not wait until January to do it. Now is the time. Put in your application, start it. You can send it to us your, your application and then you can scan and upload the documents later. But fill it out, put in for the areas. Because I tell you what happened last year, there were some persons for some areas who wanted to do. And by the time their application came in, because they're giving running offers, they did didn't have any, some people didn't get into the area that they want to go into. So I suggest that you put in your applications early. You can always make changes. Yes. And remember that you have more than one area. So you can apply to two faculties. So you can apply for something in medical sciences and something in science and technology. Just put your first choice for the one that you want. So if you want something in medical sciences, you put it as your first choice. And then your other choices you could put for the other one. So if you want something in humanities, the same thing, you put it your first choice. So you can choose two from the humanities and education, and you can choose two from social sciences or two from science and technology, but only one for law, because law only has one program at this level. And medical sciences has two, but for medical sciences in particular, if you want something let's say it is you want to become the dentist don't put it as second choice put it as first choice because they don't have a lot the numbers are small the cohort small coming in so sometimes we don't even get to the second choice because we have so many very qualified persons at the first choice so put it in and then you can make some changes using a simple email so you thank you all very much thank you again all the very best students. I don't know if you're going on holiday soon, but if you do Christmas, enjoy it. Keep safe. We want to see you in September. Yeah. Yes. And take care of yourselves and apply for your scholarship. Research, research, as Miss Taylor said, but I put in your application early. Yes. So that when they start selecting, you're one of those that they select. And remember to scan and upload your documents where you can get the school to sign off without any extra trouble to you, do so. Other than that, we will send to you when anything, but you need to put in something. Fill in the, the cape that you're going to do or the subjects that you're going to do next year, make sure you put them in. So you don't have a grade yet, but May, June or June, July, whenever it's going to be, you put those so we anticipate that something will be coming from you. So from the University of the West Indies overall and from the UIMONA and from my, my colleagues and myself, Ms. Taylor, Mr. Murray, thank you again. Thanks. All the very best to you and have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. If you have exams, do well. Okay. Thank you. And thanks again, Mr. Logan. All the best to you. And you know that if you have a question, you just simply need to send me a WhatsApp or a call. And teacher at Iona, thank you. And of course, if you have anything, you can always reach out to me as well. You can get my, well, the number is there, you can reach out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Valera Hart. And thank you very much to your team. Thank you for being here. Students, you have listened, you have heard, you have, you have understood. Um, for those persons who probably joined a bit late, the entire presentation will be on or YouTube channel, the Mark Bay High School YouTube channel. The link has been posted in the in the chat, so you can rewatch the presentation. And again, if there are any questions, queries, concerns, reach out to me, reach out to as well your heart, and reach out to the UA recruiting department. I have been working with them for a couple of years now, and they are very responsive and they are very helpful. So thank you very much for being here to the UA team. Thank you very much, students, students from all the schools that are represented. Thank you very much. Have yourself a wonderful rest of the day. And please remember the deadline is no longer in March. It's now at the end of January. So the, the application deadline has been moved forward to January. That's correct, right, Miss? Thank you, everybody. Yes, yes, January 31. Okay, good. But 
Yes, so put in your application now, don't wait. All right, bye everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Very Yes, bye. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody say something.